Ooh, Amazon shirt. He must be good at computer science. All right, so today we are going to cover a fundamental dynamic programming problem called longest increasing subsequence. I think this problem is very critical because it teaches you how to deal with different dynamic programming problems by showing the idea of subprobleming. I want to really dig into the intuition behind the way we subproblem and what DP tables are all about with this question. So this is going to be an important one. Let's go. Today we are going to cover the problem longest non-decreasing subsequence. This can be also called the longest increasing subsequence, but I want to draw a distinction here. First, let's ask ourselves, what is a subsequence? Here's an array, and I give you a subsequence. A subsequence is just a non, it can be non-contiguous, it can be contiguous, but it is a subset of the overall array. So you can see this is a subset, this is a subset. It, they don't have to be contiguous, it's just different sections of the array, but we must maintain the temporal order. We cannot shift items in order to generate a sequence. It must be a sequence in order. It is a sub-sequence, like sequential going in order. Why is this called longest non-decreasing? So there's two or three flavors to this problem. There's longest increasing subsequence, longest non-decreasing, and then longest decreasing subsequence. All of them are approached the same way, but the way we draw our distinctions are different. If we look at our array, in array, the longest decreasing subsequence is right here. You can see it's like one, two, three, four, five. We have five items. We also could do one, two, three, four. You can see this snippet is increasing, but it's not as long as this sequence. And notice this sequence is not decreasing. It is not strictly increasing because these twos are flat. That is not strictly increasing, but it is non-decreasing. So this is the longest non-decreasing sequence. The longest increasing subsequence is going to be strict. We are going to say every item, every jump I make in the array or the subsequence must increase. So we see negative one, we increase here, we increase here, we increase here. What is underlined in green is the longest increasing subsequence. This is a strict rule on the increasing of items. We can't just have a flat line of twos. It would be this if it was non-decreasing. It would be this if it is the longest increasing subsequence. See, we can't just have the twos because that's just flat. So now that we understand the problem, what we need to find is the longest subsequence in a given array that is non-decreasing. We can have elements next to each other that are equivalent in our subsequence. Now, let's look at the approaches to this problem. Before I move on any further, the code is in the description for this problem. In this video, I cover that dynamic programming approach, which runs in n squared time. Um, there's another faster approach, but in an interview, I practically would expect someone to get the n squared solution. The n log n solution is kind of like a stretch to come up mentally when you're in a pressured interview situation, but you can figure that out and I put links below. The first way we can approach this is we can generate all two to the n subsets of our array and we can validate each of those subsets for the non-decreasing subsequence property. And so we take the longest of those validated subsets and that is our answer. So the problem with this is it's brute force. We're doing exponential work and we're not taking advantage of any other better, more clever techniques for this problem. The second way to do this is to notice that we can subproblem it. I'm gonna walk through a thorough example and show you the subproblems, but know that there's a dynamic programming approach where we can cut this into subproblems and use those subproblems to build a global answer to this question. This will run in n squared time. We will see why that is the case. And then finally, there is a n log n solution to this problem. And again, I wouldn't expect this to be like the interview answer for this question. You can study hundreds of interview questions and still get questions you've never seen before. So when I'm teaching, I want to give the tools, the approaches, instead of focusing on very nuanced solutions that you might not ever use, that you might never even come up with in the interview. It's all about internalizing the tools. So now let's walk through an example of the dynamic programming approach and let us see what I mean by subproblem. Whenever we're doing dynamic programming problems, always keep this in your tool belt and think, how am I going to cut this into subproblems? And how am I going to use those subproblems and relate them to build the global solution? Our question is asking us for the longest non-decreasing subsequence for this whole array, for the whole array. 
So what we need to do is we need to ask ourselves, what is the answer for the longest non-decreasing subsequence for the array from 0 to 0, from 0 to 1, 0 to 2, 0 to 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. As you can see, these are inc we're including our bounds. So these are inclusive snippets. So if I have the problem for this, if I have the answer for this, answer, 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 answer. If I have the answer for the longest non-decreasing subsequence here, and I'm sitting at five, I need to ask myself three questions. Can I extend the longest non-decreasing subsequence here? Can I extend it here? Can I extend it here? And if I can, do I choose the best answer here, or do I choose myself plus one? So what we're going to do is we're going to compete this answer against the answer here plus one. Why? Because we're looking to increase the longest non-decreasing subsequence at each of these points. So when we're here, we want to see it. Can we extend this, this, this? So that is what we're going to do. You're going to see what I mean as we walk through this. These are what the snippets look like and the bounds are included. So now let's walk through an example. All right, so what we did is the automatic answer. The default answer to this question is one. If we have an item of just zero in an array, the answer for the longest non-decreasing subsequence is just one, it's just that item, because all we have is that item. There's nothing to compete it against. There's no, there's no comparisons necessary. That item is a sequence in itself. So the default answer for every one of the subproblems is one when we start out. And now we're going to try to maximize. We have two iteration pointers, I and J. What J is, J is where we're sitting at. We're trying to solve the longest non-decreasing subsequence problem for where we're sitting J at. We need to answer it for this guy. So what we're going to do is, we're going to look at every single answer before J. Every single answer before J is where I sits. So what J is gonna do, we plan ourselves, we look at I, I, I. So what we do is we look at every one before J and we see if we can increase and extend that sequence if the value is greater than or equal to the value sitting at i. So let's look at this. Is three greater than or equal to negative one? Yes, it is. This means we can, in, we can extend the longest non-decreasing subsequence at i. What is the length of it? We know it's one. So we either can take the value here which is one that we've already found, or we can put two. So the automatic choice is we want the longer one, choose two. So now when I hits J, we know we're finished comparing subproblems. Now we're finished. Two is the answer to the longest non-decreasing subproblem for our array going from zero to one. Zero to one, just including negative one, three, our answer, the answer is two. And now we're going to leverage that as we move forward in our array. And so now we move on. We work on the subproblem of the snippet going from zero to two. Negative one, three, four. And now we need to say, can four extend the longest sequence at one? Yes, it can because four is greater than one. We do one plus one. That is two. Two versus one, so we put two here. And then we advance i. Why do we advance i? We saw if we could lengthen the longest non-decreasing subsequence here, and now we need to see if we can lengthen the longest one found up to here. And can we lengthen it? Yes, we can. And so, what's the answer here? Two. Two plus ourselves, which we're gonna lengthen ourselves, we're gonna append ourselves. Two plus one is three. So now the longest one is three, Three versus what we've already found, two, three wins. We put three. And so now I has hit up against J. We have compared and competed every subproblem, rooted at J, competed it with these subproblems. So now we can move on. All right, so now we want to solve the subproblem of the array one, negative one, three, four, five. Negative one, three, four, five, going from zero to three. We can see we're in the C3, that's where J is rooted at. We want to solve this subproblem. The best answer we have so far is one, that's our default. Let's compare and see if we can improve our answer. Is five greater than or equal to one? Yes. So we see we can lengthen this by one, two. So now two versus one. Two versus one, two wins. So we advance i. Now we check this subproblem. See, can we append five to the longest increasing subsequence for just the array one, three? And we can append five. We can append five to that because five is greater than three. So five is greater than three. So we increase the length we found by one. So two plus one is three. 
So three versus what we've already found. Our best answer so far is two. Three is greater than two. Our best answer is now three. And now we advance I forward again, and now we need to see, can I use this value to lengthen the longest non-decreasing subsequence at four? Five is greater than or equal to four. The answer is yes. So the answer here is three. This is the answer for the array, negative one, three, four. That's the answer for the longest non-decreasing subsequence. Extend three by one, four, three plus one is four. Compete that against our best answer. Our best answer, four versus three, four wins. That's our best answer. So I hit up against J, we advance J. Now we're solving the subproblem for this array. We're solving this subproblem if we just have those items. So now we need to see, can two extend the longest subsequence here? Yes, it can. Two is greater than or equal to one. So we do one plus one because we're tacking one item onto that length. One plus one is two, so two beats one. So now we continue on. We compare against the longest non-decreasing subsequence found at negative one, three is two. We see, can we tack two onto this subsequence, ending at three? So we can't tack two on because two would break it. If we just had this guy and we also considered two, two is not greater than or equal to three. So we can't even consider it. So we just advance I. And again, we notice two cannot extend the sequence here. Two is not greater than or equal to four. Advance I. Two is not greater than or equal to five. We can't extend the sequence ending at five. We know that subproblem answer is four. We can't even consider two though. We can't even consider appending this item because it's not greater than or equal to five. We've hit up against J. So now we need to reset. Our best answer for the subproblem of just this guy, just that array, is going to be two. So we now advance and solve the next subproblem. And now we are going to solve the subproblem of just this subarray, just this subarray. So we're going to see, can this item two extend the longest non-decreasing subsequence of the array just negative one? And yes it can, because two is greater than or equal to negative one. So what we're going to do is do the answer here plus one, one plus one is two, two compete it against one. Two beats one. Two is our best answer now. And now that you're seeing the pattern, is we're seeing, can we add this item? It needs to be greater than or equal to the last item in the sequence. If we can, we unlock our ability to see whether this item plus one beats the best answer we found so far. So now we can start speeding through these now that you're starting to see the pattern. Two cannot extend this advance I. Two cannot extend this. It's not greater than or equal to four, so advance I. Two is not greater than or equal to five. We we can't extend the sequence ending at five, advance one. Okay, two is greater than or equal to two. Now we can unlock and consider the sequence, longest sequence found here, which is two plus one. The longest sequence found here, which is just two, we add one to that three, three versus two. Three wins, and that becomes our best answer. So now I has hit up against J, and we go on to solve the next subproblem. So now we are solving the subproblem of the subarray, just this. So, the best answer we have so far is one. That is our default. So now we see, can two lengthen the guy just ending it here? Can two lengthen that subarray? And we see two can. So we do this value plus one, the longest answer found here plus one, which is two. Two versus one, two wins. Okay, so now we move I forward, and now we see, is two, can two extend the long subsequence here? No, it can't, because two is not greater than or equal to three. Two is not greater than or equal to four. Two is not greater than or equal to five. Two is greater than or equal to two. So we see, two, we can extend that. The best answer we found for just this guy is two. Two plus one is three. Does three beat the best answer we have so far? Yes, it does. It beats two, so our best answer is now three. Okay, and now we see two is greater than or equal to the subsequence, just this, the array, just this, the pro subproblem solved for this, and now we see the best answer we have is three. Add one to that because we can append two. So now we have three plus one is four. Four is greater than three, the best answer we had so far. So four is now our best answer. So I has hit up against J, the best answer we have for just this array, for the longest non-decreasing subsequence, our answer is four. So now we have reached our final subproblem, the original question we were asked, the whole array. We have built up 
Each of these are answers, answers to subproblems that consist of these arrays, and now we're going to reach the end, and we're going to have our answer to our question, which is the maximum of all of these answers. So, let's continue. So now let's see. I think you're starting to get it at this point. Now we have 2 versus negative 1. 2 can extend it. What is our answer? 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. 2 is greater than or equal to 1. 2 is not greater than or equal to 3. We cannot extend our answer here. Cannot extend extend it, advance i. 2 is not greater than or equal to 4, advance i. We cannot extend the subproblem here because 2 is not greater than or equal to the subproblem ending in 5, so advance i. And we're going to see that 2 can extend each of these subproblems. 2, we can extend the best answer here by 1. 2 plus 1 is 3. 3 versus our best answer so far, 3 beats 2. So now we can see 2 can extend the best answer here, which is 3 by 1, we can extend it because 2 is greater than or equal to 2. So 3 plus 1 is 4, 4 versus 3, 4 wins. And now the final comparison we need to make. We compare whether this subproblem can be extended by 2, yes it can, because 2 is greater than or equal to 2, so we take our best answer for this subproblem, we add 1 to it because we're appending this item, and now 4 plus 1 is 5, 5 beats the best answer we have here so far, 4, so now what we have is we have the answer to every single subproblem. Looking at the snippets of the array like this, looking at all those snippets, the best answer between all of these is the maximum of all these subproblems. What is the max item here? So our answer is the length of the longest non decreasing subsequence is length 5. And I underline what it is, and it turns out that is actually true. That is the answer to the longest non decreasing subsequence. So this is what dynamic programming is all about. Building subproblems, connecting the subproblems, and then reaping the results of our analysis so that we can find the global answer. It is not about building tables, not about memorizing recurrence relations and memorizing how a certain problem is solved. It's about knowing how to subproblem, build those subproblems together. If you know that, then you have an avenue to approach these problems, even if you have not seen them before. So now let's look at the time and space complexities for this solution. So here is the time and space complexity. The time complexity is going to be O of n squared. Why is it O of n squared? We have n elements. For each of the n elements, we're going to solve the longest non-decreasing sub subsequence problem. How long does it take to solve the problem? It takes a potential of O of n work. For n elements, we're going to be doing linear work, so that becomes n times n, so then we get O of n squared. This is not mathematically rigorous. You can bound it tighter than this, but the general bound is going to be O of n squared for the work that we do, because we're going to be doing up to n work for each of the n elements. Our space complexity is O of n because we store the answer to n subproblems, and that is why it is linear space. We're going to scale our space linearly with the input. So this is the time and space. That is basically this problem. The key is understand how you can subproblem and break things down. And when you're in an in interview, vocalize that. Say that I'm looking for a way to cut this into subproblems. How can I chop this down? Maybe your interviewer will help you. Dynamic programming problems generally take a lot of practice. There's so many different variations and it's just a difficult problem set. But if you can slowly study and internalize these concepts, it becomes a little easier as you approach these problems. If you like this video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. If you're looking for prep problems, this is all about helping engineers in the interview. So, um...